Yorkshire. From its dramatic coastline in the east, via the moors, the wolds and the industrial heartlands, to the rugged Pennines and rolling dales in the west, it's a photographer's paradise. Thousands of people flock to this part of the world every year in search of photogenic gems. But in a time where there's more photographs taken every three days than in the whole pre-digital era, it's getting more and more difficult to get that unique shot. My name is Tom, but most people know me as the flat-capped photographer. I know Yorkshire like the back of my hand, and in this series I intend to take you off the beaten track to find some hidden photography locations, whilst imparting some useful photography hints and tips along the way. In the first two episodes I'll be exploring the Yorkshire Dales, travelling from the northernmost corner of the National Park to the southernmost in search of ten hidden Yorkshire waterfalls. Along the way, I'll cover rugged moorland, discover some amazing wooded glens, and hopefully come back with some really unique photographs to share with you. I'm back on the road in the Yorkshire Dales National Park. Believe it or not, it's six months since I started this epic journey to discover ten hidden waterfalls of the National Park. My excuse for the delay in putting this second part out, well firstly, work kind of got in the way after the second lockdown, and then there was a dry spell at the beginning of summer when there wasn't very much water in the waterfalls to photograph in the first place. But six months on, we're heading into October, and I'm back to see if I can complete the journey. In this second part of ten hidden waterfalls of the Yorkshire Dales, I'll be travelling from Eastern Wensleydale, down through the head of Wharfdale, via Lyttondale, and then to the southern westernmost point of the National Park, in search of our final five hidden waterfalls. Yes, the wait is finally over. We're going to start our second part of our journey in eastern Wensleydale, believe it or not, at the back of a housing estate. metres ahead of me is the main road through Wensleydale. The town of Leyburn is only a mile in that direction, and to get to this place I've actually parked at the top of a housing estate. You may argue then that number six on our list isn't necessarily a hidden waterfall, and if you live in Leyburn, the surrounding towns and villages, then you'd probably say that it isn't hidden, everybody knows about it, surely. But it's amazing how many people don't know about this place. Let's go and have a look at Harmby Waterfall. might just be out the back of a housing estate and underneath the busy main road. In fact, as I've been wandering around, I've heard lorries rumbling over the bridge across the top of the fall. But as soon as you enter this wooded glade flanked by these Yorkshire stone cliffs, watching the water tumble over at quite a height, it almost feels like you've wandered into some kind of fairy dell. And 
I think it's really important that when we make photographs of anything, not just waterfalls, that we try and get an element of that mood and atmosphere in our photographs. The way that I've been doing that here is I've been slowing my shutter speed down to create that creamy water effect that adds a dreamlike quality to the photographs. You can also think of opening your aperture as wide as it will go to utilise that shallow depth of field. Again, the hazy out of focus background can create a dreamlike effect to the waterfall. So next time you're in a waterfall location, don't necessarily think that the settings for waterfalls are the set sort of f11, f8, uh, then a shutter speed where you can either smooth it out or speed it up are the only way to go when it comes to waterfall photography because when it comes to that essential element of creating mood in your photograph then it pays to play around. As the great photographer Don McCullen once said, if you don't feel anything when you're taking a photograph then you're not going to get anybody to feel anything when they look at it. I'm going to share some of my photographs from this waterfall here before we move on to our next one but maybe just a few shots more before I move on. continue our journey southwards through the Yorkshire Dales, we've left Wensleydale behind and we've dropped into the head of Wharfdale. Now, I know I probably shouldn't be biased, but having grown up at the bottom end of Wharfdale and having this area as my playground for the majority of my life, I have to say that it is probably my favourite dale in the whole of the Yorkshire Dales National Park. And the waterfalls, and I say waterfalls because we're visiting four for the price of one at this location, are arguably one of my favourite locations within the whole dale. So I'm bigging them up here, so hopefully you'll see how beautiful they are and come and pay a visit here yourself. Now, there isn't an actual name for the falls that we're visiting now. They are marked on the OS map as waterfalls, but they are not named. The higher falls a bit further up the valley, above the little village or hamlet of Cray, are known as Cray Gill Falls. But being a bit more well known, being at the side of the road and opposite the pub, that's the reason that I'm not featuring those specific ones on this video. But if you are in the area, I would encourage you to go and visit them. And this isn't a plug for the pub, I'm not being sponsored by them, but it is a really nice pub to pop into to warm up by a nice cosy log fire on a cold day or enjoy the sunny climbs of a summer's day on the picnic benches outside. You get fantastic views down Wharfdale. But anyway, I digress. For the benefit of this video, I'm going to be calling these falls Lower Craigill Falls. As I say, there's four of them and they are just absolutely stunning. I feel like I'm walking into paradise every time I come here, as the falls just neatly trickle over the limestone around them. So let's stop talking now. You're probably sick of my voice at this point, and let's get into the nitty gritty and explore this magnificent part of Upper Wharfdale.
the four main falls that are at this area of Craig Hill. There are also little terraced falls in between as well, which make really nice interesting side points. I'm really lucky with the light today, it's just illuminating them beautifully. So what I'm trying to do is create quite a bit of contrast between light and dark to allow the dappled light through the leaves of the trees to fall on parts of the landscape and the rest is cast into shadow. It's a really good way of drawing people's eye directly to where you want them to look within the photograph. If you're not lucky with the light when you go and photograph a waterfall and you come to an area like this that's like stepping into a paradise world, there are other techniques that you can use to create that feeling as well within your photographs. You could include some out of focus foliage in the foreground or something out of focus that just makes it feel like you or the viewer is hiding behind something looking in on this majestic secretive world. Be careful if you do that though because sometimes if you don't choose the right foliage it can draw your eye away from the main focal point instead of enhancing the feel of the photograph. So be careful with that, but when it comes to waterfalls, it's often the waterfall that stands out more than anything else anyway. Now I must admit I'm really tempted to nip into the White Lion at Cray for a pint or two, but I know that we've got a few more waterfalls to cover, so I'm going to go and have a look at the last one here at Craigill before heading on to our next location. with you from this wonderful location. I must stress that when you come to places like this you must be very careful of where you're putting your feet. I've nearly come a cropper a few times because we're heading into early autumn and it's very slippy underfoot. I'll talk a bit more about seasonal waterfall photography a little bit later on in this video but whatever time of year you visit this location or any other then just make sure that you're well prepared because you don't want your camera equipment or more importantly you to need some vital repairs after your trip out. Anyway we're traveling now from this paradise wooded glade to something a little more dramatic and exposed. I'll share my photographs from this one first and then we'll carry on at waterfall number eight on this list of hidden waterfalls of the Yorkshire Dales. goes on and we continue this journey to discover these hidden waterfalls. The weather just keeps getting better and better and better. It's absolutely fantastic. I've obviously timed this trip for the second part of this video perfectly, even though I am that six months late. We're now in the heart of Wharfdale. I've parked my car in the little village car park in Buckton, which is another one of those beautiful quintessential Yorkshire Dales villages. The great thing about the car park at Buckton is that it's got some public toilets and when you've been spending as much time around water as I have, they very much come in handy. Anyway, the next waterfall, number eight on our list, is on the track just up here. It's known as Buckton Gill Force and I know that there's a couple of falls around this area. One which is framed nicely by a tree and another dramatic one at the head of the valley. So let's carry on up the path and see what we can find.
when you come to an exposed location like Buckton Gill Falls, it really pays to take a look at the landscape around you and see how you can formulate your compositions around it. We were talking about feeling and mood earlier on, and in a location like this, it's always good to get that very exposed feel to your photographs. So as I've been wandering around up and down this beautiful little valley, I've been looking at how I can use the formulation of the lines of the landscape to meet at the dramatic points, the waterfalls, the trees in the, the coves. And by doing that, you can just create this dynamic nature to a photograph with these triangular shapes that can really boost the mood of your photograph. The other thing that I think I will do with a lot of the photographs that I've taken at this location is turn them black and white. What this will do is it will help people's eye to get drawn into the contrast points, which is really useful in a bleak area like this when you haven't got lots of trees and other things like we've seen at the other waterfalls that we've visited on this journey. I'm going to keep exploring, take a few more photographs, share them with you, and then we'll head to our penultimate waterfall on this epic journey. As you can see, as I'm heading up towards waterfall number nine on our list, I've shed a layer and the paragliders are circling above us. And it really feels like summer. It's hard to believe that as I'm recording this, it's actually early October. As I was driving here in my car, the thermometer was reading 22 degrees, which for this time of year in the Yorkshire Dales must be pushing on some kind of a record. Anyway, we've left Wharfdale briefly to head up Littendale and a specific little valley known as Coat Gill. This is where we'll find our next waterfall, which I'm reliably informed is probably the most off the beaten track of the falls that we've covered so far in our top 10. So I suppose we better put our best foot forward and see what we can find further up the valley. Let's hope we can find what we're looking for. I must admit, when I first arrived at this location, I thought, oh dear, there's not much water here. I was planning on walking up the side of the stream and seeing this almighty crashing waterfall. But now I've got here, I'm quite glad that there isn't a huge amount of water, because if there was, I probably wouldn't be able to get the shots that I've just got. I've actually managed to scramble a bit up the gorge, where the rocks were a bit slippy, but still the they weren't overtopping my Wellingtons, which was a good thing. And I actually managed to get some shots that I'm really quite pleased with. It's such a dramatic location, uh, arguably the most dramatic that I've visited on this visitation of 10 hidden waterfalls in the Yorkshire Dales. Now it's reminded me of a point that I think is really, really key to get across in especially locations like this. When we photograph waterfalls, we often go with a mindset that we have to carry all of this equipment with us, from tripods to filters to various lenses that, for, that we may need for every eventuality. But when it comes to a location like this, where it is quite difficult to get to and you almost need two hands to steady yourself to get to where you need to be, you don't want to be carrying all that equipment with you. So today I've just been carrying with me my trusty Z6 camera with my 24-70 to lens on 
And that's about it. I've got a few extra lenses in my bag, but I'm carrying that for filming purposes rather than photography purposes. So when you do go to waterfalls, think about the location, whether it's easy to get to or not so easy to get to. And if it's not so easy to get to, just like this location here at Coke Gill, then potentially think of taking less kit with you. And not only will you get great photographs if you compromise a few times, you'll also enjoy the experience much more because you're not thinking, am I going to drop my expensive camera in the lake or the water or the river at any point soon? Anyway, I think time and light is running out on me now. So the next waterfall I visit, although it will be just after the photographs that I share from this location for you, for me, it's going to have to be in a few days time. Hopefully not six months time. But if I'm wearing completely different clothes and the snow pouring down on the next shot, then that's the reason why. I'm going to head back home now anyway, and I'll see you at waterfall number 10 after I've shared the photographs from this dramatic waterfall here at Coke Gill. sound of running water. It's one that I've got very used to on this journey and unfortunately our journey is nearly at an end. We've travelled right from the north end of Swaledale at the very top end of the Dales. We've even ventured across the border into Cumbria and finally down through Wensleydale, Deepdale, Wharfdale and Littendale to our final destination here. But of course it's not quite over yet. Behind me, in this beautifully autumnal wooded glade, is number 10 on our list. This is Hebden Beck. I've parked in the little village of Hebden, which is on the road between Grassington and Pateley Bridge. And I've just come up quite a steep, winding, but tarmac track this time, rather than the off-roading that I was doing at the last waterfall. And just off the road, in these trees, as I say behind me, is Hebden Beck Falls. So let's go and take a look at the final waterfall on our list. Let's hope it's well worth leaving it until last. Turn from my adventure up Hebden Beck. What a magnificent waterfall to finish on. It really is spectacular. The size and scale of it, the width especially, is magnificent to see. It really is. And I may have got a bit wet and a bit muddy, but I don't care because hopefully I've got some lovely shots that I will share with you in the not too distant future. But before I do, I just want to pick up on a point that I was making earlier on in this video about choice of the time of year when you come to photograph waterfalls. Now this isn't an excuse for this video coming out six months later than the first, but I do find that spring and autumn, those seasons of change, tend to be my favourite seasons to come and photograph these magnificent landscape features. Because in the winter time there's often too much water in the fall, which means that you don't get the definition in the water that I've been trying to achieve at this one here. You've also got very monochrome and very monotone branches and rocks that just sort of overcomplicate the scene. 
even if you turn your photograph black and white, it tends to just make everything merge together and draw your eye away from what you should be looking at, the waterfall. And of course in the summertime, branches have their own problem as well with the leaves that grow on them. You'll often find, especially in a waterfall like this one at Hebden Beck, where it's crowded with trees, some of which have fallen into the water itself, you can't get the shot that you want because it's just obscured by all the leaf cover. So that's why in spring and autumn, where there's not as many leaves and probably just the right, the right amount of water falling over the falls, that you tend to get really, really nice effective shots. Anyway, we've now come to the end of this epic journey through the Yorkshire Dales, photographing these ten hidden waterfalls. I'll run through them again at the end of the video and show you my top ten photographs from each of them, just to recap your memory of the ones that we've discovered, and you could come and check them out yourselves. Please make sure if you do come to hidden locations like that, this, that you do respect them. Remember that old adage of leave only footprints and take only photographs because we'd like these places in the Yorkshire Dales to remain hidden as much as we possibly can for everybody to enjoy. I wouldn't like to lose that feeling of joy as I've crested hills, rounded paths and gone over rocks and seen these wonderful sights in front of me. So if you do come to these places then please, as I say, remember to respect them. If you have enjoyed watching this video then please stay tuned for the next video in this Hidden Yorkshire series. I promise it won't be six months after this one. I'll try and get it in over the winter at some point. And in the meantime please check out our other series on Yorkshire Photo Walks YouTube channel including the basics of photography and thinking photographically. If you'd like to learn about photography in unique and inspirational locations like the ones that we've visited here, then check out YorkshirePhotoWalks.com where I take people in small groups to do exactly that. You can also follow Yorkshire Photo Walks on Instagram and Facebook, that's at PhotoWalksYorks. I'll share with you all of the photographs that I've taken at this fall, plus a recap of the 10 in a moment. Um, but before I go, I'd just like to reiterate once again, thank you ever so much for watching and waiting those six months for this video. I do hope it's been worth it. But until next time, enjoy photographing the waterfalls of the Yorkshire Dales. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.